Hello, my name is Sahil Malik. I'm a trainer and consultant and I love Angular. I deliver trainings on Angular regularly and you can find my email address right here. Here's another video making yet another Angular concept easy and simple to understand. As always, I look forward to your feedback. Thank you for watching. Another interesting topic in Angular is the concept of translations or multi-language support. Uh, this is a very common requirement, so it is natural that Angular has support for it built in. So let's see how Angular solves this problem. So I have a simple project here built, uh, and you know, watch my previous videos in which I walk you through exactly how I built this project. And if I do npm start, let's see this project in action. Let's go ahead and visit uh, localhost 4200. That's where it's gonna load this project. Give it a second, it's still starting up. Here we go. So basically this project saves my first Angular app. Hello, so I learned a bunch of things that are data bound here. If you look in the code, let's go to app component.ts. I really should hide those files, but I'll do that for the next video. You see here that, uh, you know, this is how the application is built. Fantastic. How do we go about supporting multiple languages in here? It's actually very simple. You go to package.json and make some minor changes. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to under dev dependencies. Now this is statically linked. So that is why this change goes in dev dependencies, not in dependencies. So I'm going to say at angular slash compiler, compiler CLI. So that was already there, which is, which is why it's complaining compiler CLI and uh, go ahead and provide the version that I'm interested in. And the second thing I need is Angular platform server. Let me just make sure that's also the right version. I think it is, but I just wanna be sure. Oh, platform serve, server. See, I caught a mistake there, okay. So basically I need to add these two things in there. And because I just made a change here, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna say npm install. So it gets those two new packages. And what I want to do now is that I want, I'm gonna add a command called npm internationalize up here. And what this will do is, uh, you know, it'll look for certain tokens in my project and it'll extract out, uh, you know, an XLF or optionally, an XMB file for the translation tokens. Now, these are standard formats and lots of programs out there that'll let you, you know, work on them. But one thing we need to do is that we need to give it the location for that file. So inside of my tsconfig.json, I'm gonna go ahead and add a node called Angular Compiler Options. And I'm gonna say that the gendir for that particular file is src slash locale. Now, before I run that command, I'm going to go ahead and decorate, uh, let's translate app component.ts. I'm gonna go ahead and decorate app component.ts with some special tags. So I'm gonna add i18 and here, which basically is saying that, you know, this token is going to be translatable. And similarly, I can go ahead and let's say that here, I want to translate just that much. So obviously, uh, you know, the interpolation, stuff that, that can also be translated. But here, let's say that I want to translate only that, but it doesn't have a tag around it. So I can use ng container like that. Now, there are a lot of you know ways you can translate stuff in. So basically, uh, you know, there are either, uh, you know, you can specify things like that, or you can give a little context because, you know, the person doing the translations doesn't have access to your application. So they know, they get some hints on what to do. Uh, or sometimes like you yeah, have without an element, uh, you want to translate attributes. Sometimes a number of items matters and you can translate it like this. Uh, you can adjust for gender also. So this is quite flexible. So basically now that I have, you know, these tokens created and I'm going, what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to come here and I'm going to say npm, inter, npm run internationalize. And by doing that, 
Give it a second. So it's going to run this command. And by doing that, if I go back here, it creates a folder called locale in which it creates a messages.xlf. So the idea here is that now you don't, you're not supposed to you know, touch these GUIDs or these IDs here. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new file here. And this new file, uh, let's create a couple of versions of this. And I'm going to say that the first file, let's try Spanish. Okay. So I'm going to say dot ES, ES. So that's for Spanish. And this is for dot FR, FR for French. Now, the thought now is that you're supposed to go in here and you're supposed to provide translation tokens for this. There are programs that will let you do that also. So let's go ahead and provide these couple of translation tokens. So let's try Spanish first. Now my Spanish is not very good, so I'll try my best. So this one is easy. That's hola. So that should be simple. And my French is even worse. As I say, pardon my French. So let's go ahead and provide a French translation for this. Now, the theory again is that, you know, you would outsource this to somebody who actually speaks French, not me. And I'm going to come here and basically, you know, provide the translation. So we have these files, but Angular isn't going to like magically read them, right? There has to be some way for us to tell Angular that it is supposed to read those files. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to have a service that'll read, you know, this file. So here I'm going to create a folder called services. And here I'm going to go ahead and create a new file called utility.service.ts. And here I'm going to go ahead and place, you know, some code here, which basically you pass it in a file. You could do this over HTTP also, no problem. But I'm just doing XHR because then this code is portable, works with Cordova, Electron, etc. So basically, we're reading this file and it uh, you know, returns a promise, and the promise will resolve once the file has been read. Simple as that. But the question is who reads that file? And at what point do we need to provide the translatable version? And the answer is that this actually goes in your bootstrapping code. So I'm going to go to main TS. Now, the, the theory here is that, you know, the, the main TS is supposed to be very lightweight uh, and, you know, just keep the bootstrapping code here. I'm going to break that rule here. It's supposed to be a best, best practice, but I'm going to break that rule a little bit uh, just to keep the code simple for demo purposes. So I'm going to do a couple of imports and basically this is the, the line that I need to change. And what I need to do is that I need to pass in options, right? And see, there are these various properties here in this options object. Uh, you know, I need to basically create a provider and that provider is based on that file. So I'm going to go ahead and you know, let's say that I have a method called get translation providers. Let's say theoretically speaking, and I haven't written this method yet, but basically providers is, you know, basically get translation providers is going to use that utility service, make the Ajax call or XHR call, and then it'll get the options and then with those options you know we plunk that in there and that should translate stuff. So next we need to write this get translation providers method and that method looks like this. So basically what we're doing here is that we have hard coded the language here to Spanish and okay well you can get it using a cookie query string parameter whatever you want but for demo purposes I've just hard coded it. And then basically what we're saying is that we're using this utility to get the file for us. And based on that, we create the translation provider. We resolve it, send it back here. And the, as options, we send the provider in. And that's how the application bootstraps. Let's go ahead and run it again. So I'm going to hit NPM start. And give it a second. Right, and it is starting up. Here we go. And go ahead and refresh. And now the application is running in Spanish, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to fr-fr. 
save and come back and refresh it should auto refresh in a second as well but now the application becomes french and this is how you do multi-language support in angular thank you for watching